Have you ever dreamed of practicing Aikido in Japan? Or maybe you've had the chance for that matter. Well, I am about to embark on a journey to Japan once again. Uh, in just a couple of days, I'll be visiting Hombu Dojo in Tokyo and also my sensei's uh, dojo in Yokohama. Uh, whether you're in the planning stage or you're still dreaming about it, I've got some tips to make your Aikido experience in Japan truly memorable. For those who don't know me, I lived in Japan for almost a decade back in the late 80s and early 90s, and I make it a point to return every year whenever possible. Now, after years of learning the do's and don'ts the hard way, I'm here to share some insights in this new video series that I'm putting together. I hope today's video brings you not just tips, but insight, inspiration, and the motivation to elevate your Aikido practice. And if you're gearing up for your own Aikido adventure in Japan, consider this video your essential guide, please. Let's check it out. The first tip I have for you when training in Japan is to arrive early, get on the mat early. You know, uh, I don't know the, if I've ever heard this in Japan, but I've heard it in the United States. If you're on time, you're late. Um, and a lot of people, in fact, I, I did a little bit of work with uh, chat GPT before I made this video. And um, it brought up the word discipline a lot for this arrive early thing. I think, first of all, talking about discipline turns a lot of people off. But um, whether it does or not, I think think that there's a really fantastic way to frame this and that is that when I lived in Japan and to a certain extent the United States but especially in Japan um, when I arrived early and got on the mat early those were the days that I got these really special gifts um, I would get on the mat early and then my senpai would be there and we would want to warm up together and I got some special insights as to you know, how he was doing a certain technique or something. So, um, and, and at the very least, if you arrive early, it gives you time to sit, first of all, warm up your body physically, but then also to sit and prepare mentally, okay? Um, a lot of people try to use that, um, that pre-bow-in time uh, for socializing, I'm not a big fan of that actually, uh, sometimes I do, but most of the time I try to warm up my body first and then if I don't have a senpai to train with or a partner to train with, then I try to warm up my mind. So a little bit of just kind of emptying out my brain so that it can, <laughs> so that it can take in new information from the upcoming class. So anyway, yes, tip number one, I really, really recommend that you arrive early, not just early enough to get on in time for the bow in, but arrive early so that you can get on the mat early. And actually, let me be specific. I really like to get on the mat 10 to 20 minutes before bow in. Sometimes earlier than that, but 10 to 20 is, that's a good amount of time in my opinion. So go for it. Um, another tip, tatami. Uh, of course, if you've been doing Aikido any amount of time, you know that we don't step on the tatami with our shoes or even our slippers or anything like that. So I'm assuming that you already know that. Um, but there's another thing that I would see Westerners do when I was living there. We'd have guests come and, um, there's something called the genkang in a home, in a dojo. And that's like the foyer. Uh, anyway, it's it's built right into the home so that there's um, a level floor. You walk in on this level and sometimes that floor is just cement, sometimes it's tile. And then there's a step up onto usually some wood in a dojo. Um, I guess it could be the actual tatami. I don't, I don't know that I've ever been to a dojo that goes straight to tatami from the Genkong. Anyway, it's usually wood. And so I can't tell you how many times I've seen Westerners slip out of their shoes, 
step around in this cement uh, or tile where the other shoes have stepped and then they step up onto this pristine beautiful wood so see if you can plan your footwear and I know now I'm going as I said in a couple of days and right now it's um, it's January so it's gonna be kind of cold the best shoes that I have as far as warmth and waterproofedness um, are hiking boots so there's gonna be laces uh, so that's a little tricky but um, if I if I can take my slip-ons and that works for the weather then I'll do that because you can slip right out of your shoe and don't step in the in this on that cement area or tile area step right out of the shoe and then put your foot on the wood it's so simple actually um, again if you have lace-ups it's tough but anyway uh, people who aren't aware of that um, they actually just go out of their shoes they stomp around in this dirty area <laughs> and they step up to the clean area so again maybe you already know that but uh, for those who don't it's a it's a simple mistake to make so and it's simple to, to fix simple to correct once you're aware of it you'll notice it um, and and by the way Aikido is one of the goals in Aikido in in my opinion is misogi and cleansing spiritual cleansing physical cleansing you know you sweat during the workout and then it should feel really refreshing so there's this um, theme of misogi through everything that we do and uh, and so we can take this this idea of misogi or cleansing um, to a literal extent where we're working to keep the dojo clean so purification and and cleanliness is a really important theme in Japanese culture all right so feet go from the inside of the shoe to the pristine part not into the dirt and then to the pristine area um, the third tip that I have for you today hey we'll get back to the video in just a moment but I just wanted to give you a gift for joining me today I want to give you a free resource, my body alignment checklist called The Three Lines of Equilibrium in Budo. It's a simple PDF guide. The checklist will help you begin to identify and eliminate any ineffective or harmful patterns of movement so that you can preserve your body and improve your technique and continue training for years to come. You can download it at leah-suzuki.com slash body alignment checklist with hyphens or just click on the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy the gift and I hope you take action on it. Now let's get back to the video. The third tip that I have for you today is to connect with the community. So sometimes when I was living there we would have guests come who were from another country and let's say there's like three of them, 20 of us, and uh, and after class sometimes they would just go off on their own and um, that was really disappointing and it could be seen as being sort of cold um, so anyway I recommend that you just make yourself available and get changed as quickly as possible after class so that you can come out to the to the entrance slash exit and um, and if there are some invitations to join some people, then, then go with them. Uh, well, don't run away from your own group. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, I really recommend that, that you join in with the social activities after class. And a lot of Westerners um, complain, or at least they notice, that there's less talking in Japanese classes on the mat. Um, a lot of times in American dojos people stop and kind of analyze things you know how do you think that was oh I think you need to move your foot more this way let's try it again okay stop start stop start whereas in general I mean every dojo is different everywhere around the world but in general in Japan there's less talking and less analyzing while you're training um, the talking 
analyzing the guidance from senpai in my experience that 99 percent of that happened at the pub so this is really really invaluable to go to the pub or, or wherever um wherever they're going the coffee shop the pub uh to join in and sometimes you know sometimes the conversation there is not technical at all or not even about aikido but um but sometimes it is and so you just never know when you're going to get some really valuable information um and if you don't feel that you got any valuable information for your aikido training hopefully you at least had fun and made some new friends uh let me look at my notes here and this will serve to um it, immerse yourself in the culture so immersion just like learning a language uh immersion learning is usually more difficult at the beginning of the learning process but it pays off in the end because the way a baby learns a language for example it doesn't think about pronouns or direct objects and indirect objects or anything like that it learns it by immersion and so one of the benefits to immersion learning is that you truly embody whatever this is whatever this this study is or practice so um going out um and and or just you know immersing yourself um in the culture and with the people um helps you to go in that direction and um oh also connect with the community under the same topic of connect with the community um on the mat as well I've been amazed when I lived in Japan and I, this bothered me so much. So not just amazed, but annoyed and amazed. Um, I was amazed at how often people would come to Japan from a different country. They'd trek to the dojo and, you know, and back then there was no Google. There was no internet. <laughs> there was no Google Maps. There were no cell phones. So they'd find their way to the dojo two or three people from this country or that country and more often than you would imagine it wasn't the norm but more often than you would imagine um these two or three or five visitors uh would train with each other in my sensei's class and so what i recommend is that before the bow in spread out get away from your friends that came with you from your country just tell them, hey, look, I'm going to make myself scarce, you know, because I want to train with the Japanese. Um, you can train with your dojo mates from your dojo anytime. You know, if, in fact, I'm taking some students with me um, from my Los Angeles dojo uh, when I go in May of this year. So I have to remember to tell them, okay, yeah, we'll walk to the dojo together. But when you get into the dojo, spread out spread out so that you can train with somebody who's who's who you don't normally train with all the time anyway um that's it those are the three tips early arrival and arrive early get on the mat early um step directly from your shoes to the tatami or wood and connect with the community so uh i hope that this serves you well. I hope that this was helpful. Um, if you've been to Japan or you have some of your own tips about going to Japan, please share them in the comments section below. If you've got any questions about the tips that I shared, please feel free to ask the questions in the comments section. Also, of course, as usual, please let me know what seminars you're going to attend this year. Uh, if you're interested in attending one of my seminars, my seminar schedule can be found at leah-suzuki.com slash seminars. Um, again, I want to give you a gift. My checklist called The Three Lines of Equilibrium. It's from my paid online course called Proper Body Alignment in Movement. But it's free for you today as a thank you for hanging out while I uh, did this video. The checklist will help you identify and eliminate ineffective or harmful patterns of movement so that you can preserve your body and improve your technique and continue training for years to come. 
Just click on the link below or type in leah-suzuki.com slash body alignment checklist with hyphens. Again, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.